we vote in the House of Commons two or three times a day. The Minister has to pass you, and then you've got ten minutes while you walk around to the next vote mm -hmm. to have his ear. There's written questions as well where we can table things on the public record and get an instant response within five working days. And thirdly, uh, we have access to papers and information which PR companies the government is carrying out a major review of gambling laws for the first time since 2005. It is considering whether to bring in tougher regulations which could hit operators' profits. The Times went undercover to investigate allegations that the gambling industry has been securing support from MPs in exchange for financial reward. This is in spite of strict rules which prevent MPs from carrying out paid lobbying or advising on how to influence Parliament in exchange for pay, or the expectation of pay. To test this, we set up a fake company and approached several MPs saying we were looking to hire a politician as a paid expert advisor. We said the fund had been set up by a wealthy Indian businessman who was looking to make investments in the betting and gaming sector in the UK. One, Scott Benton, agreed to meet reporters at a central London hotel in early March. Nice to meet you. After introductions, the MP tells us that although the gambling industry's lobbying had been relatively successful, the contents of the review were once again up in the air with the appointment of a new culture secretary, Lucy Fraser. Now we've got a new secretary of state. I spoke to her yesterday. The alarm bells were ringing, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. on two different levels. A, I don't think she knows, I don't think she's got a grasp of the detail mm -hmm. of the reform she should have at this stage. And then B, not only did she fail to have a grasp of the finer points, but her general direction seemed to be taking it back mm -hmm. to pre Rishi Sunak days, which is when we were looking at affordability proposals mm -hmm. potentially being levied upon everybody Th those are our biggest who concern, has an online account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the industry needs to start its lobbying process once again. We ask Benton what he could offer the company as an MP that a conventional lobbying or PR outfit couldn't. MPs are not allowed to approach ministers or ask parliamentary questions in order to benefit a company which is giving them, or proposing to give them, a financial reward. That's a very good question. Um, probably the direct ear of a minister is actually going to make these decisions. So, um, two different, I'll, I'll be entirely honest, I'll speak as a non-politician. Mm -hmm. Having worked in PR in the past, mm. um, PR agencies are ab absolutely great. Uh, they have established set of contacts, um, they know how to work the room, etc. The one thing they don't have is direct access to a government minister. Mm. We vote in House Commons two or three times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be voting later. Um, you will literally stand at the beginning, at the entrance to the voting lobby. And if you wait there for five minutes, the minister has mm -hmm. to pass you. Mm -hmm. And then you've got ten minutes while you walk around to the next vote mm -hmm. to have his ear. We can obviously put parliamentary questions mm -hmm. on the table. Mm -hmm. So PCMS questions on Thursday, so we can ask things in a direct manner okay. in public to see if the reaction we get is consistent with what we get in private, which mm -hmm. isn't always the case. Mm -hmm. uh, there's written questions as well where we can table things on the public record and get an instant response within five working days mm -hmm. on any question whatsoever, which obviously nobody else uh, um, outside the political realm can. He then shows us a written question he has recently tabled, he says, on behalf of a company. Uh, oh, there we go. There's Two weeks ago, 17th of February. So um, there's a written question, so that was sent in on behalf of one business, essentially. Right, where am I looking at the this, topic? This yeah. one here. The Office of Product Safety and Standards um, conducts an investigation into regulators for repeat, repeated breaches of the regulator's code, and within five days you get a full answer. Right, great. In, in uh, response to that answer as well, you get a private note from the minister, yeah. which sometimes tells you information he couldn't put in the public domain. And you don't need to say with that it wouldn't be public that we've asked you to do that, it would just, they, you just get the response and... I'd have to declare an interest. Right, okay. Um, but I wouldn't have to declare what the interest is. Right. So as long as I've gone on the public record and say, I'm declaring an interest because I may be connected to an yeah. operator in the gaming world who's... Yeah. Uh, who I've had contact with in the past. Benton suggests other ways in which he could help TAR partners to push for policy changes that would benefit their interests. 
MPs are prohibited from advising companies on how to influence Parliament. Meeting with advisors, mm -hmm. I think, is urgent. Meeting with the minister himself, Stuart or Lucy, mm -hmm. uh, would be absolutely fantastic, although probably less likely than meeting Stuart, who's the direct minister responsible. Um, tabling some written questions to try and flesh out the government's intentions mm -hmm. on X, Y and Z, and then probably writing something more formal and having me sit down with the minister and go through it line by line. I've supported other colleagues, particular asks in meetings mm -hmm. when they've spoken to company X, Y and Z, and mm -hmm. I'm sure they would return the favour as well. We ask about the white paper, which is due imminently. This policy document is likely to contain market-sensitive information but Benton says he is willing to leak a copy before it is made public. Would, we, would it be realistic to get advanced sight of the white paper, for example, when it's sort of finally decided or anything on those lines? Uh, probably. Um, that would only be a number of days, so... OK. So that would still be useful for investment? Yeah, for a bit of a defence site. Absolutely. I could guarantee you would get that within 48 hours of publication, for example. Before publication? Yeah, I would yeah. make a song and dance and make sure that happens. Great. As the meeting wraps up, the conversation turns to how much he would be paid if hired to do around two days' work a month. What sort of, uh, I mean, do, you have, do you have a figure in mind? What, what sort of conversation would you be looking for? Um, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> I think that would be fine. We must have made to, to give I mean, we were thinking probably in the range of two to four thousand pounds a month, um, but um, I don't know if that sounds in the right ballpark. Um, yes, I think yes. During the 70 minute meeting, Benton had repeatedly outlined how he was willing to take actions which would break parliamentary rules. We told him we were due to fly to India a few weeks later and would let him know whether we planned to hire him.